What's up, guys? How are you doing? Welcome to our very first stream of 2013. I am your host, Dutch Boy, three-time World Series of Poker Bracelet winner, and below me is a lovely XM wall. How are you doing? Happy New Year, everyone! <laughs> so, before we start, I got to, uh, well, I'm a little bit white here, that's okay. I got to, uh, I got to share something that Michelle showed me. So this is, uh, one of the small redeeming things that I can see in uh, Trump presidency is just flat entertainment value. Every, you know, every day, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, regular business hours or four in the morning, you can check Twitter and, you know, with, with, with pretty good, pretty good uh, regularity, President-elect Donald Trump tweets something uh, without really thinking about it, without really passing it on to anybody. And it's always absurd and funny. And uh, this this might be my favorite thing on the internet right now. What we have here is Mark Hamill, uh, Luke Skywalker, who I didn't you know, I I had known this, but I forgot it that Mark Hamill played the Joker in the in the, in the Batman animated series. When we grew up. Back when we grew up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a great series. I love that show. It was a good show, series. It was yeah. really it really explored some real dark, you know. Moral I really like that. I guess I, I really liked uh, his girlfriend, Harley Quinn. But everybody likes her now, so everybody I guess I don't her. like her anymore. You could say that you liked her before. You I like Poison her. Ivy now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mark Hamill read one of Trump's tweets as uh, as the Joker. Uh, with uh, with some pretty good results. Let's listen. Happy New Year to all, including to my many enemies and those who have fought me and lost so badly. <laughs> they just don't know what to do. <laughs> Love. I think the best part is that love at the end. It's so, so great. It's so great. He needs to just do all his tweets from now on. <laughs> we should. He should. Happy New Year to all, <laughs> including to my many enemies and those who have fought me and lost so badly. <laughs> they just don't know what to do. <laughs> love. I love that. I love it too. I've Thank been listening to it over Trump. and over again. Thank you, Mark Hamill. Yeah, I, but I, like I was saying, I think he should keep on just... Mark Hamill should just Just a tweet, like an audio tweet version <laughs> of everything he tweets. Like this everything thing about Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep is overrated. Overrated! <laughs> oh um, my gosh. I think it'd be great. Gosh. Okay. Are you a big Meryl Streep fan? I like her. Yeah. I think she's a very accomplished actress. W which, which movies... Doubt is the one that is my my head, just because it's I just remember it being such a big deal, and such yeah. a controversial. But she's very. Uh, she, she also she also did a movie I do want to see about her singing very poor badly. Is that the new one where she's a really like her husband really? I heard this was the thing to NPR. I forget the name of it. I'm sure you guys are on the in the chat know, but. Uh, yeah, she sings really badly, and the husband hides it from her. And then she, uh, she, I think, rents Carnegie Hall. I think she's. <gasps> I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but I have. I'm, I'm not. Idea that, like, I am not much. Is yeah, the, uh, but uh, we don't. We we yeah, don't really know like what that. happens. So, hey, I'm the rookie and the vet. Good to see you. Good to see all you guys. It is good to see you all for our very first 2017. Oh, we got some bits. Ooh, purple bits. I like purple bits. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Hollywood guy. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, bits are a new way of like cheering on streamers on Twitch. It's kind of a, a nice little addition. Twitch is actually... Uh, I forgot how Twitch works now. It, it, it's been it, so long since we've been on... It's gotten better in the last six months. Oh, has it? Yeah. We it haven't has. been, but we, it, it, we've only not streamed for a couple, uh, like a month. Yeah, a month and a half. So I guess I didn't notice. It took, it took a long break after uh, after our election stream. <laughs> that was very true. We were very traumatized <laughs> for really a very me, long uh, time. Question my my world. We had view, doubt. Life assumptions. Doubt. I had such doubt. Doubt. Such doubt. 
And uh, we still have doubt. Yeah, kind of made the. And now we're just watching the swamp being drained. Pretty much, yeah. The swamp is being drained, guys. It's a great thing about this new year. So the last time I streamed, I mentioned that we're going to be uh, pulling back the hours that we put on Twitch this year, but we're still going to be streaming. And I talked it over with Michelle. We're kind of uh, thinking getting into this Monday, Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, sometimes Sunday. Slot. Just Monday, Tuesday, guys, for sure. Monday, Tuesday. Just Monday, Tuesday, for sure. And Dutch will tweet out if he's going to do any other days Yeah. and whatnot. And this week we might do some other days because guess what's going on? My birthday. The Winter Poker oh. Classic Event Series. My birthday's next next week. Or yeah, your, your later. birthday's not this week. It's my birthday month, guys. Birthday month. Jump the gun a little bit. Month of my birthday. Jumping oh, and next isn't next bit, month actually. the inaugural. Wait, when's the inaug When is the president actually be officiate? Is the official? Um, we have gosh, ten I days, eleven it. days. Yes, is it the twentieth? Yeah, twentieth. Friday, next Friday. Next Friday. Hey, by the way, big shout out to John Blaze. John Blaze, man, I've been catching your stream. It is not an easy thing to do juggling all the different layers and the windows and the overlays and the uh, you know the obs or the x split and playing a competent game of poker but you uh seem to be doing a pretty good job so guys if uh if you haven't checked out john blaze's stream i i encourage you to check it out another uh local vegas grinder like myself and uh it's it's pretty cool pretty cool seeing people get into the party if you're playing any of these good luck to you and uh, by these, I'm talking about this Winter Poker Classic Festival. So, did you this just is, when did when was that announced? Event number one was yesterday. Oh, okay. So we're on event number two right now, which is this fifty dollar rebuy. Oh, is that what you're playing right now? That's what we're playing. Oh, yeah. surprise, surprise, surprise! So first place in this is a little bit more than uh, what we're going to be used to for a, a Monday night tournament on WSP.com. Let me go ahead and. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, prize pool information over here on the top left. Notice we have another Twitch streamer on our left. Butters. Oh, hi, Butters. Hello, Butters. Good luck to you, sir. Off to a pretty good start there with 21,000. And I hope that the uh, grind is treating you well. Any uh, any big news today? Uh, I you know what uh, my mind went blank. There's a lot of big news, but where should I mean? Do you know any big poker events that poker news? You know, um, yeah, I just yeah, read no, no, I just read Karina's husband just won a tournament, a PLO tournament in the Bahamas, the the poker PCA? star. Yeah. Chip Jet just won something. So? Yeah, I just read that. Chip is so old hat, old school. He is, uh, when I was just coming into the game back in 2002, he was one of the players that, you know, was just always on the trail, always grinding. Um, Karina was also on the trail at that time. They're a great couple, you know, poker's, you know, poker's original power couple. Really. Yeah, and it was his first PLO yeah. tournament, I guess. So he won, yeah. I find that hard to believe. It says, boom, Chip wins the first po first tournament he plays. Oh. Probably the first tournament he plays during that. Yeah, I found that. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's been, I'm reading that wrong. He's been playing like, for, uh, <laughs> for 20 years. I well, I mean, like P he might not PLO play PLO tournament. though. He could be playing other variants. Maybe. I mean, stranger yeah. things have happened. Erase that thing that I just said. He. This is his first tournament he played at that series, at okay. the Atlantis. I will erase it. Yes. By the way, All right. this Twitch alerts up because I I think. Uh, We've got a resub, Sooner Chris Poker, 21 months. Boom! Thank you so much, man, for supporting the uh, supporting the channel. Let me get this. Uh, our alert box widget up. Oh, is my mic really loud? Oh, it probably is. Just like just it always like is. A bike. I will. I will. I will. I will uh, talk softly. ACS waffles. Let's see if we can't get that uh, that alert from Sooner Chris. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Repeat. There we are. Thanks, man. Thank you very much for uh, keeping the channel going. 
Oh, Big Lebowski says they had their baby. Congratulations. Aww. Oh, your is your is your microphone not on? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean it's on the uh, it's on the. I think so. Yeah, my mine's just really loud. How do you know? Because everybody says you that. Just take it, E1CNR's word for it. No, Daiquiri <laughs> says it's also. I mean, it's happened before. I it's also. Happened. I are you? Um, do you have the mic in front of you? Yes. Maybe right I should. Maybe I should put the mic over here. I don't know. I don't know. We can we can worry about it another time. I guess well, just, we can shut down just, the stream. You want to shut the stream down and do an audio test? No. All you have to do isn't there like a thing that you can adjust? My volume. Just do the opposite, like this. All right. Let me get the sound settings on here in between. I games. probably messed it up from when we were playing video games. Uh, we still yeah. haven't hit 100 on Warcraft, guys. I'm very disappointed. 110. Or 110, right. yeah. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Had to start playing. Been playing a lot of Ark. I, my dinosaurs are fine. Let's see. Where are you at? Did they move you already? Or are you on this table? Okay, let me just change your levels just a little bit here. Looks like they're a little bit higher. Okay, maybe that'll work. Maybe, I don't know. It's all good. So I'm trying to find you here and it's putting me on a different table. Maybe, where are you? Oh. One thing I'm not liking is that... Um, That's funny. So Texas Nevada, that's who I was watching. He's he's playing this tournament as well. So that's good to see you, man. Okay, let me try this. I'm just gonna remove my. Uh, I really don't like messing with the audio settings on the Xbox because like, it always backfires and it always means that we have to just shut the stream down and restart it. So let's just see if the uh, let's see if the that levels works. that I change works. It's gonna be like a five minute thing. It's not so bad, I'm sure. Yeah. By the let's way, SD Bob, good to see you. Thank you very much for uh, for the resub. 18 months. Really appreciate that. So this is if season three then, officially, right? I yeah. guess. If we were to mark season it three. down as a season. It is. Season three, episode season one. Three. Episode one hype. We've done a lot of these and we still have tech issues. Tech tilt, the worst yeah. kind of tech tilt. Yeah, and June always cry seems to know that we were streaming because she's starting to do her her ritually crying stuff. Come here, little dog. And yeah. She doesn't want to come to me. Hey, congrats, Big Lebowski, by the way. A hey, December thirtieth baby. Congratulations, man. Happy to hear. Uh, happy to hear that it went okay. Congratulations on the new addition to your family. A New Year's. New Year's Eve baby. Oh, yes. It's nice. You're a Christmas Eve baby. How yeah. was your birthday anyways? It was awesome. It was the best birthday I've ever had. Ever. Can't uh, can't think of a can't think of a better one. It was a good birthday. And your Christmas? How was that? Did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? Think about it. We got some new board games, guys. I dominated Dutch. And I'll tell you, we've been playing a little bit on, uh, Steam has something called Tabletop Simulator, which is really pretty cool. Maybe I could do like a, uh, a trailer or something on it, but it, it basically lets you oh, emulate you any trailer. sort of board you just game. just tell people what it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we got it for 10 bucks in the winter, uh, in, in the winter sale. I think usually it's 20, but it basically allows you to emulate any board game and play it online through Steam with your Steam, you know, with your Steam community and your Steam friends. It's really pretty cool. They uh for uh for, for Christmas Michelle got me a, a board game called uh Great Western Trail, which is pretty cool. for your birthday. Birthday. It was a birthday present. Great Western Trail, it's pretty different. cool. And uh we played that a few you know a few times. Then we tried playing it online and it was just really easy. It's it's just 
Well, it's not easy. It's just really, it's already, somebody had already scripted it and made it. I really like them. I'm going to make the fold here. I just but don't. But it's, it's, it's easy uh, as far as cleaning up goes. Because you know it's what? a very big, fast game. I'm going to let the water keep on, keep on picking on us with these little min bets. I just don't really see anywhere to go with Jack Six. I'm trying to imagine a flop that I'm going to, I'm going to be really excited about. Um, so you got it, Pew Water. I do feel like his uh, his range is wide open there. There's a, I mean, there's a decent chance that Jack High is actually the best hand. Hands like 10-9, off, you know, off suit, eight six suited. I could see B Water with all sorts of uh, all sorts of hands like that, but just not. not I'm not going to know where I'm at ever unless the flop comes out um, where we completely crushed it and left no room for him to have anything. So. here too playing pretty timid but it's pre ante and early so don't blame me too much plus I'm, I've got other things on my mind it sounds perfect Dutch ignore the that that tilt sounds great it's caught up it's perfect okay good We either peel or we raise, and I don't know. Ace ten off suit. It could be in our uh, in our three bet range. It would definitely, it's definitely the the higher volatil you know, volatility play making the three bet there, forcing the blinds out, getting called by Soren probably, getting called by Tony Sand. There's no antis in there to really steal. So I like just peeling, playing in position, seeing what comes, and not getting too married to it. Ace is up. How you doing, man? He says, looking good on the big screen, buddy. The free big screen. So that was actually something kind of cool. Uh, Ace is up. Son won a raffle for a huge, like, 4K ultra television. There were, like, 5,500 entrants in this raffle. And Jack won. So uh, pretty cool. Congratulations on that score. And Virgin Ice, thank you very much for the resub 21 months in a row. We wouldn't be here without you. And I mean that. We would not be here without you subs. So thank you. Appreciate you keeping it going. Yeah, that wind chime in the background sounds... It's, Tony Sand it's very good. busting him. So Soren uh, hitting that open-ended straight draw against the set. Classic cooler. Getting in uh, way too much in there. Way too much in there. You know, I don't really like the uh, the check raise option after Red Sox for life called in the small blind. But, you know, wow, that's just... We're talking 100 big blinds deep, you guys. Do you really need to go broke um, with an open-ended straight draw? A hundred big blinds deep in this thing. I don't think so. And this is why Soren has the bull next to his name. The bull's dangerous. He can definitely gore you. I mean, Tony Sand 23. It's not like uh, it's not like he got it all in. Well, most of it, most of it all in on the river. Actually, it looks like <laughs> looks like Soren went for it. Check raised the flop, bet the turn, shoved the river, and tried to uh, try to. To push Tony Sand off of a, a weakish queen, queen jack, queen ten, might have worked, might have worked, but Tony Sand is not going anywhere with his set. So, GG and nice hand, Tony Sand. Poker news? You want to talk about some poker news? Uh, I I didn't keep up on the news, but I did read a story about a woman who got some a box full of potatoes for. Her. For Christmas, it was because you were talking about Ace's up big screen TV. Well, her husband had bought a big screen TV from Walmart. It okay. had it had ten potatoes in it, and no big screen. No. She returned it though, and they did replace the TV. But I guess that's a common. I guess not not common. It's some kind of Walmart common. scam. Yeah, they they return the item and they put potatoes in it. Hey, Jay Rufford, good to see you. Happy New Year. Jay Rufford, how you doing, man? It's great to see you. We were just we were just talking about you the other we day. We were. Actually. 
All right, guys. So Pocket Tens is going to uh, is going down in flames. We're done with it. We went ahead and fired out a, uh, a continuation bet against Respect and Brim Kiss. Um, because Pocket Tens is such a vulnerable hand, uh, we don't really want to be giving free cards to uh, you know these random hands that we're ahead of, like King Jack, you know King Queen. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty much done with it. Maybe, maybe we're ahead. Maybe we're ahead of uh, Bryn Kiss's flush draw. No, he had the he had the uh, he actually had the two pair. So could that pot have gotten a little bigger? No. No. If he went for like a check raise on the flop, or if he tried to value bet it on the turn, or if he tried to uh, uh, if the queen didn't come and he he bet on the river. The only way that pot is getting uh, is getting really big there is if the turn comes like a uh, a ten of clubs, where suddenly Bryn Kiss is just a little bit worried about the uh, you know another flush draw popping up. We flopped our set, the uh, the third diamond didn't come out to chill our action, and Bryn Kiss is feeling good with two pair. So Dutch, do you want to talk about uh, the P? What is it, PCC? PPC. PPC. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because yeah, that's a big one. That's huge. That's pretty big news right yeah. now. Yeah. So. I think that it's getting news. underreported, because. Has anyone reported on it? Poker News reported on okay. it. Okay. I don't know if you guys uh, heard. I think it. Card Player also reported on it, but it, just, it, it isn't really getting a lot of attention. You know why it's not getting a lot of attention, Michelle? Because it's not good for anybody in poker. I, I guess I look like a floating head too. It's not good for anybody. Let me take a look. <laughs> no, you don't look like a floating Maybe head. you do. One of us does. With the black back, back the Maybe it's the me. Black background. You you look spooky. But um back to the P what is it? PCC P PBC. C PBC. So um, PBC. So guys, you probably well you you tell them. No, I don't really know much about it. All I know is it's, it's fucked up. That's I would like I to know. hear an Exomwall's words. Well, some dudes started <laughs> part of this <laughs> Like tournament thing, where people played throughout the year, right? Yeah. And people won seats to go to the what was it? To some Aruba, Aruba is that right? Yeah. And uh, instead of so they made the people that well, they didn't make them, but the people who won these seats paid their way to Aruba and hotel when the P P C was supposed to pay for those tickets for them and comp them or right. Uh, anyways, they got fucked. <laughs> that's, pretty much, that's pretty much what happened. PBC um, fucked over a lot of uh, a lot of poker players. Yeah. Well, not a lot of poker players. Well, the people that won. But the, f the ones that they and did people fuck won over and people who good. people who were supposed uh, to. Well, they. I mean, the, the people that didn't win fuck got fucked over too because they had they, they thought they were going to I, go there. I, I would agree with that. You know, that's something that I was thinking about, uh, and I, I talked to uh, I talked to a poker player here in Vegas named William Reynolds. Wow, this guy respect. Shoving ten thousand seven hundred and ten, just open shipping it. What a uh, what a bony fish play! There it is, the very first bony fish of twenty seventeen. Because that is not a good play. No matter it's what he has, it's not a good play. Just respect him, Dutch. I, I guess. guess. Um, yeah. So I was talking to William Reynolds about this when the uh, the Epic Poker League collapsed, um, because there were twenty seven of us who who were in the league who had won our way into the million dollar free roll that they pretty much just took away. So that's like, you know, doing the math, about $40,000 in, in real money expected value that I had, that the Epic Poker League basically disappeared. Uh, and I was talking to William Reynolds about it, and he felt like he was, uh, he was, you know, had a bone to pick with him too, and was really ripping on him. But he wasn't one of the twenty-seven, and I didn't quite understand it at the time until I went home and thought about it. You know, if if you play a tournament with a certain prize, and you get knocked out, and then it turns out that the prize wasn't really there, does it really matter if you won or not? You know, the, the fact is your equity was robbed. You know, his he bought in expecting a certain value for that buy-in that wasn't there. So I actually feel like it doesn't matter if you won or lost at PPC. If you played 
at the PPC, you were personally affected by this. Uh, yeah, and, for sure. You know, it's just it's an expectation, not reality. You can't, reality, just, you but can't it just matter. You can't just say, "Oh, I didn't win." Doesn't matter. So the PPC was basically the series of tournaments, and every single time, you know, they'd have all these stops at these, you know, at, at these smaller casinos around the nation. They'd pump it up. Um, people would come in and play, and the the top, you know, the, the winner at every stop. Maybe it was actually even a few winners at every, you know, like the top three or something at every stop would, as part of their you know, prize, win a package to the PPC main event, which was in Aruba. And there's these, these two guys named Sandy and Brian who were running PP, this, this poker tour. I think that they might have been from Wisconsin. Um, I know a lot of the, like the pros on the tour, like Mark Kroon, for example, I think that the reason he got involved was because he was friendly with these guys. Or you know what, now that I think about it, Florida. I think they were from Florida. He had a couple of other uh, tour pros on here, which I feel really bad for because it's always bad when, you know, I know Mark Kroon. I'm sure he didn't have any knowledge of what was going on. Ronnie Barta, Chris Wallace, these guys are good guys who would never in a million years rip off, you know, the poker community on purpose. Um, Brian and Sandy, I can't really say much about. I had never met them, but... Uh, they sure pulled a fast one because th what ended up happening was for the full year, every single stop, they're giving away these seats to the PPC main event, and everybody flies out to the main event in Aruba, and they play, and you know they they they, they tell them that no, we can't give you your money right now. We can only give you up to like ten thousand dollars, and everything else will have to be wired over to you because of. Uh, because of issues with the Aru with the government in Aruba, and they've done that before in the past. They have done that. They in the have past. said that before, and people so has, people like accepted it, money. went home, waited, waited on the wire, waited on the check, waited on the wire, and it's not coming. It's not coming. I talked to uh, I talked to some of the insiders over there at PPC, some of the bloggers. You know, we're uh, pre pretty friendly with a couple of the uh, the people who do reporting for the PPC. The insiders, we'll just and uh, they were they were freaking out. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's 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 horrible. From what I heard, they made off with half a million dollars or whatever criminal charges pending, probably. Um, you know, it's really sad. One of the one of the final tableists is a girl named Joan. Uh, you know, satellited into the the event that she ended up qualifying for for this PPC. So for $40, she ended up winning like 22000 And it's like, you know, a life-changing, uh, you know, a life-changing amount for a lot of people. And now she's just not going to get it. You know, we got, uh, you got another, you know, the, the winner of the thing. I mean, imagine you go to Ruby, you come home, you're all excited. You're like $120,000 score. You, know, you, you you celebrate with uh, the people you care about, and everyone's really happy for you, and you're waiting for the check, and it's just not coming. It, it's got to, it's just, it's sick. And what makes it, you know, really unforgivable, in, in, from my point of view, is the, the way that these two guys, Brian and Sandy, are handling it, is just to completely say absolutely nothing. Disable their Twitter accounts, disable their Facebook accounts, um, offer no explanation. All the way up to like, you know, to, to Christmas, they were saying, "Oh, everything's fine, everything's fine," but everything was not fine. And uh, the money went somewhere, uh, you know. So where did it go? Either one of the you know, or, or both of the partners in the tour, Brian and, uh, and Sandy, were skimming the whole way and just hoping that they'd be able to make back what they stole along the way of the tour, uh, you know, in, in the championship event by way of numbers and, and rake or by virtue of uh, you know, getting some, some greater fool investor to put money in that they could use to pay everybody out, the, you know, and, and make up the shortage or cash games because from what i hear from one of the bloggers uh who works on that ppc tour sandy and brian had worked out a deal where they bought the card room in aruba 
So they were going to be getting all of the, let's go ahead and make a three bet here. They were going to be getting all of the revenue from uh, cash games. So maybe they spent the money that they were, they were supposed to be holding uh, in trust for the, the prize pool of the championship event that everyone had qualified for and won. Maybe they spent that expecting to get it back in, you know, in cash games and basically just made this, this big gamble with, um, with the prize pool. However you look at it, it's horrible. You got, a, you got Poker News reporting on it a little bit more faithfully than the other, uh, than the other media outlets. Why? Because the attorney who's handling the case for uh, you know, four of the, of the event winners um, is one of their editors, Max Verstandig. He's, a, he's an attorney, East Coast. And he also advertises on Poker News. They made it sound like there were criminal charges filed, but as far as I know, there have not been. It's just been a, it's been a civil case where the worst that is going to happen to these guys if some attorney general, you know, prosecuting attorney or, you know, federal agent doesn't feel like um, actually filing charges against them is going to be um, some civil penalty that they'll probably be able to bankrupt out of. So I feel like... Hopefully more details will come in the discovery of the civil case that will lead to some actual criminal charges against whoever ended up with the money and isn't giving it back. Or So what should the players do if they're in that situation? Should they be calling the police or FBI or who should they be talking to? See, this is a, this is a tough issue because well, the maybe, money was held in them in Aruba. Okay. You know? So is it the Rubin government? Is that what you're saying? Is it, the jurisdictions kind of what I what I would think you do if you're in Aruba and they're not giving you your full money is you call the Aruban authorities. Either you know Aruba probably has some sort of gaming division that you could probably call. Uh, at the very least, I'm sure they have a, you know, a police force that you could call. Um, and you make a big stink right there at the casino, and you do not let Brian or Sandy leave, leave the country of Aruba without answering for what they did. If it was here in the States, it's a little easier, you know. But now what do you do? You come back to the States and, and you're you, promised. you promised money, and it's not coming. You're sweating, and you don't, you don't, like, you, you don't want to make a big deal out of it because you don't want to hurt the tour that just paid you. But you're also starting to work, and, and you also have, uh, you know, kind of get this feeling that if you do make a stink about it, it'll make it hard to get your money. Oh. You know, that's, that's what a lot of times people will make you feel like is, oh, if you, if you, you know, Twitter this, we're not going to pay you. Or if you, uh, you know, if you file a lawsuit, then it'll, it'll slow the process down. Uh, you know, they, they, they just stall. They just stall for time. What, what should they do? Well, you know, getting a lawyer is a good first step but i think that they should probably go you know a second step and actually um try to work with uh you know authorities because I, I actually feel like there was there was fraud committed in basically every tournament stop every single state so i think that they should work with um with law enforcement yeah i think they should work with law enforcement i don't think they should i mean if anything you know they should try to get those people out of the business of doing tours yeah I and mean, I, I don't think that that is going to be a problem anymore i don't see them well they could they could bankrupt out and then they are trying to continue the 2017 tour if you look at their website it looks like everything is still okay yeah so it's not they're trying to rake out of it right <laughs> well just a real real sad situation. It is a sad situation. You know. Vice and I guess from what very much. from what I heard Appreciate the from resale. what I heard the guy that runs the tour always went out and partied a lot and cheated on his wife a lot too, so he wasn't Pretty very Pretty much. Yeah, Sandy so, was a real piece of work. I don't so I, I don't know personally. I've never met the guy. I only heard a lot of rumors from people who were involved in the tour that he would go out every single stop, get super smashed drunk. Uh, he's probably getting drunk because he's Go home with any girl who would, you know, would, or, you know who would, who would take him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like those vice little vice chicks. Thank you very much for the the uh, the cheer and the bit. Really appreciate that. It's cute. So, 
Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. My uh, my heart goes out to you know, everybody who was neg- negatively affected in that situation. There's a uh, there's a lot of victims, and uh, I feel I feel bad for all the victims. Um, it's just it's just a real bad situation. Yeah, and it, what makes it worse is the guy just kind of dropped off the, the two people just dropped off the face of the poker world. Yeah. Well, it's going to be easy to track them. They're not, uh, they, they didn't well, I think just a disappear. lot of the situations with, I think if, I mean, honestly, I think if they were honest with the, the community, I think a lot of the community would understand if there was a legitimate reason for the, why they're not, you know, paying people out. What if it was something with the government? Now everybody's just assuming. Yeah. You know, and but I think that's there, worse. there is no legitimate reason for not paying everybody sure. out. Sure. There, there is no legitimate reason. You know, mm-hmm. the, the legitimate reason was because they were using money that players had already won to operate their own little business expenses um, and probably operate their own personal expenses as well. Well, they yeah, they probably um, had yeah, the nicest hotels and bought a bunch of food. And- not to mention just, you know, their normal everyday nut. I mean, you know, these, these guys weren't, you know, young, starving entrepreneurs who... You know, never left the office. They were both family guys who, you know, suppose you know, I assume had had you know well, we don't mortgages, really know. and I don't, I don't know. They could have, you know what? Know. They could have had gambling problems. Yeah. They could have been like pit boxes. They could have been going playing blackjack or or baccarat. You know, we don't know. We don't really know. What I think happened. What I think happened is that they never segregated the money. They always had just like one big bank account. And when it came time to make a decision about whether to uh, buy this space in their Aruba Casino so that they would have the card room, that they would own the, the, the cash games in the card room, they used the money that. So they owned the card aside. room in Aruba then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so th- they used that money and assumed that they would be able to rake it off from cash games during the event. So that's what I think happened. I think that they made a bet. Um, Did they? Uh, so they just bought the card room? I think like in the last year, yeah. So it was probably a bad investment. And they probably didn't really worry about it because they, you know, they, they looked at their, you know, tours make money. You guys, it's not like, you know, it's not like these guys were 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 running a business that was just doomed from the beginning because there's no way to make money off of a tour. A lot of tours make a lot of money. But maybe they thought they may, would. Maybe they thought they would make more money than they actually made. Is that yeah. Where, yeah, that's probably what. And uh, yeah, it's not. It's not the first time that a, a, a smaller mid stakes. It's tour, called the PPC. P, yeah, PPC. P, PPC. Poker players. Poker Championship players. <laughs> it's not the first time that a tour has had you know, a, a mid-level poker tour has had issues this year. Uh, I Ninja Tour, I Ninja Poker, which was a, a tour coming out of uh, Minnesota, uh, had a lot of sponsored pros, and uh, you know we're doing the same kind of thing that MSPT and HPT, uh, you know, had done successfully, WPT for that matter, um, and with I Ninja. It's a little different though, because I don't think any players who were actually playing in the events didn't get their money when they won. But I know a lot of the uh, sponsored pros didn't get their money. What and was it called? The PPC is called. What's the acronym for again? I think it's Players Player. Poker Championship or Poker, Poker Players Championship Ch- Tour. Poker. PPC. Oh gosh, Poker Players yeah. Championship Tour. Okay, so what other news is going on? Phil Ivey has to repay back everybody. I think the, the appeal's done. Everybody. Uh, there's, no, <laughs> there's no more, there's, there's, there's nowhere else to go. He lost his case, and now he's on the hook for somewhere, I think, on the order of 12 Ridiculous million? amount of money, I don't even know. Ridiculous amount of money. Uh, is it really a, a big surprise? No, but it is news. You know, that happened last month. Definitely uh, puts a puts it in the hit into the uh, the Ivy Christmas budget. Um, 
I actually suspect that uh, when he won that money, it didn't all go to him. It, it, it appeared to me like it was more of a, uh, you know, a, an organized effort to to beat these casinos. He wasn't acting alone. It wouldn't surprise me if the bankroll that he was using wasn't his alone. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't if if the the money that he has, you know. It, 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 that he owes these casinos, it, like it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't get that money. I don't know. I imagine that he's going to be able to pay it back. But who knows? You never really know what what's Maybe start going on horses. behind you know, you know, behind someone's you know, behind someone's windows. I don't. I don't know. I do know that there's not a lot of people out there who can just write a check for ten million dollars without without feeling some pain. One of those guys, though, <laughs> one of those guys that. who can do that funny. was playing the uh, the PCA 100K Super High Roller event this week. Kevin Hart, comedian Kevin Hart. Did you know, Michelle, that Kevin oh, Hart... Oh, the comedian? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you know that he is the highest paid comedian of 2016? No. He made $87 million last year. Ugh. 87 million dollars really yeah he dethroned uh no did you know Jerry that Seinfeld did you know that our buddy that uh dealer sean had a took a picture with him and they with met yeah and they have a little picture and i was like oh that's cool <laughs> i didn't know he he won <laughs> he didn't win he didn't win he played he, he played he it played. twice he was in for two hundred thousand dollars. oh that's what you were saying you were like you were just okay that you were casually saying that for some yeah. reason i thought it was a poker player when you were saying it i didn't no, no i no, didn't no, put no. it together that it was a comedian well he is a poker player apparently well the guy who won it was a poker player jason croon okay jason croon is definitely one of the good guys in poker you guys he's awesome he's very charming and funny at the tables uh really you know just pleasant to be around and a good ambassador of the sport in life and uh, i really am uh, happy to see him take it down um i was more happy to see kevin hart fire two bullets and i was even more happy to go on to uh everybody's favorite poker forum two plus two and watch uh just post after post after post saying stupid things like like i never really watched kevin hart movies why would you even post that? You know, I don't. You know, I didn't really know. I'm not familiar with his comedy or anything, and I don't really watch his movies. Who it's said like, that? Why would you post that? That doesn't Who add anything. That? Who cares if you have seen Kevin Hart's movies? It was like one of the. Uh, he should have said that he he one looks of the forward to watching. Other guys were kind of making of fun movies. of him because he's short. Other guys were like, I wonder how much action he had of himself. And then other people God, were making hating. fun of those people. People are, people are saying, hating. Uh, he's got enough to have. He's probably the only person in the whole field who's rolled well enough to play every single 100K high roller for himself. Probably is. I knew that Kevin Hart played big. Um, when I was working with uh, with Cliff Joseph, some of the players we were working with um, were in Hawaii, making you know making little flights to Hawaii just to play a private game with Kevin Hart. That's a long flight. Wow. You know, and they're flying from Vegas to Hawaii for the weekend because Kevin Hart's getting another poker game on. You know, you see pictures of and him I'm playing sure his with friend, like, I'm sure he has, like, friends that are playing that big cash game, too. I mean, that are not normally poker players. Yeah, so, I would I think mean, so. Yeah, I would think that, like... Probably encompasses all his... kinds of different <laughs> people. It's probably pretty valuable being a professional poker player on good terms with Kevin Hart. <laughs> it's probably a pretty valuable thing. Um, so it looks like maybe he's going to get a little bit more into poker. Maybe we'll see him with the World Series. I think that'd be, I think that's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Everybody's that's, like, isn't that oh, what, it's going to breathe new life isn't into that, poker. Isn't that what you're supposed Adrian to do? Adrian Paul and Kevin Hart are playing poker. But Next poker. we'll have Meryl Streep playing poker. But poker's supposed <laughs> to be a thing where you're supposed to do when you're retired. Or when you can, you, you're rolled up to do it, right? I, I guess so. Or uh, you could be the pr- people that are trying to make a profession out of it. I, I mean, and if you're, if you're Marty Derbyshire, then poker is only supposed to be a hobby. And uh, you're right. <laughs> well, it's, isn't it? Like, you know. Marty, Marty Derbyshire got fired, guys. That's not oh, really that news. Oh, that isn't news. That isn't big anymore, news. Is that yeah, that was, well, it was. We haven't been streaming for a long time. I'm sure these, these folks a lot of you might want to hear the gossip. You might know who Marty why. Derbyshire is. Um, if you don't, you might just follow Joe McKeon and see. 
post after post after post of Pound, Fire, Marty Derby. Marty Derbyshire Marty was Derby pretty was old nice school. Guy, yeah, though. I've always liked Marty. Um, he seemed nice when I um, met him the few times that I did. Honestly, I have no problem with him. I, I don't even have any problem with things that he wrote. You know, he calls it like he sees it. He's doing op-ed pieces, opinion editorials for Poker News. Yeah. And he has a, he has strong opinions that sometimes ruffle some feathers. I think that he was good for Poker News, and I think it was a mistake for uh, for them to fire him. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's... It, it's just kind of a, a, a weird thing. Um, but I'm sure he'll land on his feet. He's been reporting poker for a long time. I think he might have been with Poker Listings before he uh, switched over to Poker News. Well, this is fun. We're going to go ahead and make a little three bet here with uh, the third best hand in poker, Pocket Queens. Let's go ahead and do that. Isolate Tony Sand. I'm trying to inflate this pot. So speaking of uh, 2 plus 2, they got hacked. Yeah. Full Take database. Your Their full database was uh, for sale on some of the Darknet sites. For sale? The whole database? The whole database. Oh, which that's means weird. usernames, hashed passwords, <gasps> email addresses, zip codes, all of your information that, you know, they had in their in their vBulletin database. Oof. <sighs> you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that these hackers have your your password hey, what, for 2 plus 2. What are they going to do? I mean, well, I guess they, they can take do. your account. Let me tell you what they would your... do, okay? They will take the database. They'll start running some very simple Fishing? password cracking applications because the way this works is all the passwords are encrypted. Oh. Well, that's good to know. It is good. But if I have a dictionary file of the top 1,500 passwords, we'll say. Well, uh, we also, before you keep, keep go on with the story, everyone, you should have different passwords for different sites. You should. And you should write it down on that's a really piece of paper. really important because this is, what, this is what a hacker would do with the information. He would, he would start cracking the passwords. And it doesn't matter, like, however complicated your password is, if, if someone were to just focus on your password and spend a lot of money to try to crack that password, and you know, it, it could be done. Eventually, it could be done. So they have your password, and they have an email address on file for you. Now, how many people use the same password for their email that they use for 2 plus 2? How many people use the same password for their PokerStars account or their Party Poker account as they use for 2 plus 2? Enough. Enough. Dodge and weave, dodge and weave. Boom. First casualty. So, uh. I thought you had Queens. Oh, that was the last hand? They, got, they have your password, they have your email. They check to see if you, the password works for, their, for your email. And if it does, well, once you have access to someone's email, then you can do all sorts of nasty things. You can change their password yeah but even if all they had was access to two plus two there's enough there's enough business being done on that forum you know player swaps oh, buying and selling can, pieces can take people's bitcoin too i'm thinking right they probably have bitcoin or no i don't think that anyone is going to have like an actual bitcoin wallet connected to yeah but they might have two. like a bitcoin account connected to uh, like a seals with clubs or whatever sure. Bitcoin Coin account base or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're I'm not saying talent. a wallet for sure because that's a little complex. I don't even yeah. understand wallets. Well, there's no there's, there's no telling what what kind of damage is it going to have on on people. And if you know if you have an account on two plus two and he doesn't, you really need to go on and and number one, change your password on that site. Number two, stop using the site. Just use Reddit. You know, don't worry about the mods. Just use Reddit or uh, or Twitter. You know, it's just a bunch of uh, it's just a circle jerk of negativity anyway. But use different passwords for every single site. I've got all my passwords written down. Let me, no, basically. Uh, I know all of them. <laughs> there's they some apps out me. there like LastPass or whatever. But use a different password for every single site and don't come up with something in your own head because it's not going to be secure go to you know go to a secure password generator site that will actually spit out random characters and random numbers because if there's one thing that humans are not good at it's being random guys we're gonna be right back we're on a break two minutes don't go anywhere we'll see you in a second
Okay, guys, we're back. We promise not to talk about politics. <laughs> People should not talk about politics. That's funny. We were actually saying no. People should talk about politics. Of course, it's actually should. something that people should be encouraged to talk about because it's important. Why do why do people say oh don't talk politics and don't talk religion? Because I, I feel like those are the two subjects that that maybe pe can, people can get most passionate about. And well, I think that when we say don't talk about a certain thing, it's like hiding from the truth. You know, it's like hiding from, it's like, it's ignoring something. Like, don't talk about cancer. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you know. It, and it, it's bad for society because then they don't try to fix that or f figure out why that's a problem. You know, and that's... A, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think it's bad for society that we have a stigma against discussing politics and religion, um, you know, among our, among our friends and casual acquaintances. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody, uh, if somebody is, you know, voting on Trump because they think that climate change is a lie, it's something that you should discuss and be encouraged to discuss to get closer to truth. You know, there was a, uh, there was a real good quote the other day that I was reading from John Locke about um, his willingness to have his own mind changed. I wish that I could remember what it was. Something about like, and if anything that I write be found untrue, let my hand be first to cast it into the fire. I thought it was going to be a rhyme. If it seems untrue, <laughs> then you will know what to do. <laughs> but casting the fire is kind of cool too. All right, butters. I think that we've got the uh, the odds to do a little set mining here, so let's let's go for it. Well... No set. Do we think Butters is uh, three betting lighter than uh, than a pocket pair? Yeah, that's oh, ace I don't king, know. ace queen. I think so. Let's go ahead and uh, peel a card. This could get a little expensive. But we're ahead of a pretty big chunk of his range, you know. We're, we're behind hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks, and tens. Um, we're ahead of the ace kings, the ace queens, and the hands like, uh, you know, queen jack suited or king queen suited. The fact that he checked back on the turn doesn't really tell us much. <sighs> now he's firing out 25-20, and this really sucks because we're just, we can't fold here. Nice hand there, Butters. Nice. Could have been a little more expensive for us if he had decided to go for a bigger value bet on the river or if he had decided to fire out a bullet on the turn. We could have ended up losing a lot more there. We know Butters is, uh, is, is a little tighter than I think a lot of people think he would be. I think you know his three-bet range is... Uh, isn't quite as wide as some other players would be, but I'm not going to just say that Butters is going to be sitting there with uh, with hands like Ace Jack suited or you know King Queen suited and never three bet that. What do you have there, by the way? Pocket pair, pocket fours. Oh, okay. All you needed was a four. That's right. That is all I needed. Yahoo got uh, hacked a few times as well. I mean, didn't they get hacked? Don't they get hacked like every month? No. <laughs> Did you change your password on Yahoo though? Seriously. You should probably change it. If you haven't already. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did change my Yahoo password. Can you, can you email it to me? Does uh, Yahoo have uh, authentication capabilities or no? Where you can text your authentication co uh, token? I don't have Yahoo. Two-factor authentication, I yeah. think is the, uh, the word we're looking for. I think so. Okay. So a Hollywood guy says something. He says, Dutch, I need your opinion about what to do with live dealer errors. 
such as burning too many cards, saying you didn't say raise soon enough, flipping cards when dealing to you, etc., etc. You yell at them. Um, yeah, that's the only thing you can do. You yell at Just them and say, yell at how, them, how the hell did you get a freaking dealing job? Jesus, job. my grandmother deals better than you. This is your career, man. Jesus, Take it seriously. this is my money you're fucking with. No dollar for you. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, seriously, uh, I don't know. How do you what, deal what with it? What can you do? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, what are your options? Like, get upset? I think politely, cor- cor- politely, politely <laughs> correcting them would be <laughs> like, nice. Um, if a dealer is making a mistake, you know, just don't take it personally. They're not, they're not out to get you. And usually those yeah, dealer errors mistakes. are going to even out. You know, I still remember one of the biggest, uh, uh, biggest pots of my career early on. Where I was, uh, I had like, I was a 19 year old kid playing in uh, Mountain View, California, in the 4 8 limit game, and uh, hopelessly underrolled. My whole bankroll was like $900. And the big pot of the night happened where I had flopped, I had flopped the straight. I had like 7 8. Holy shit. Flopped the straight. The, oh, the good end of it. Oh, oh, before you finish the story, Barbecue Kid subscribed with his uh, Prime when we were on break. Barbecue Kid, thank you very much, man. So, good to see you. Really appreciate that. So, uh, Twitch Prime is awesome. It was a huge pot. I flopped the, uh, the nut straight and capped it on the flop, capped it on the turn. On the river, I was all in. And when I went to flip over my cards, the dealer had slid one of my cards accidentally into the muck. I was in the one seat. You did? I didn't do it. Oh, the dealer. The dealer did Oh, it. my I remember God. remember the look on his face. Actually, we're going to just make the call here. I remember the look on his face. He looked at me and he was just, sorry. Sorry. Like sorry. that, right? It was more like a... <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, was I, uh, I about lost my shit. I was so <gasps> upset. Did you, um, did they kill your hand? Yeah, they killed my oh, hand. Oh, my yes, God. Yes, they killed my hand. And I was, I did was you yell at the guy? Stated. Well, no, he, it's not his fault. Did you cry? You know, yeah, there was some, there was some crying right there at the table. Were I pretty much like, just broke down. I begged like, them to give me my money back. Did, is that, was that when I you started the guy who first? won, who was laughing so hard. I'll never forget. He was laughing so how hard. How hard he was laughing. Oh my God. What did he have? When I laughing? turned over one card. Cause he knew, I think by the end of it, mm-hmm. once we capped the flop, capped the turn, he realized that his straight was no good. Damn. I remember how he was did, just so happy and so just laughing so hard. Did you call the floor at least? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then with the, I mean, the floor, the floor was just there. killed it. There was only one table in that little room. You can't do anything about dealer errors, man. Just remember that they are they are doing a job. They you know, they're not doing it because they love making mistakes and love messing you up. They're doing it because they're tired and they want to go home. They got a lot of things on their mind. They've got lives you know, just remember that everybody is living, you know, living as the main character of their own story. And as you're waiting for the hand to be dealt, some other person is looking at the felt, actually making the movements with their hand to get the cards out in the air. They try to do it quickly because the more hands per hour you can get, the more, you know, money you can get in tips. Sometimes mistakes happen. Just realize that mistakes you know, are going to be new. If I was a dealer, if it's I was a dealer, I would be like, it's just a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a game. Yeah, that, that's that would, would be, be good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's, it's just, just a game. game. Yeah, I think I would playing be... playing with money that you can't afford to lose. That's, I would be an annoying dealer because I, I would. I would be like, <laughs> well, you must have... You, you know, I, I would have I would, I been an annoying one. But make sure you, you, you treat... Or I would have been like this. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> guess we're just destined not to bet that street. That's pretty I funny. I guess you weren't supposed to win that hand. You weren't supposed to win that hand, Dutch. <laughs> Sorry, Dutch. You weren't supposed to win that hand. What you do not want to do is abuse the dealer. Huh? Abuse the do dealer. not call yeah. the dealer names. Do not curse at the dealer. Do not, don't curse anyway. You know, if and I guess if you're upset enough, you should just pick up. Don't do anything to piss off the dealer. You know, because even the, the dealer made a mistake. He's going to be feeling embarrassed. Don't try to cause too much attention to the. You know, don't don't bring too much attention to that embarrassment. 
um, it can actually affect your bottom line if you do that. Uh, case in point, one of our really good friends, Johnny Monette, is you know he's one of the biggest winners of the of the you know of, of the big game at Aria and Bellagio. The, you know they play anywhere from 400 800 mixed all the way up to you know 4K 8K. And he was one of the big winners over these last few years um, until earlier this last year in 2016, he got banned for being mean, being to, mean to dealers. dealers, making them cry. They would make mistakes in pots that were, ball. you know, 16, 70,000 They used to call him Angry pots. Johnny. And he Angry would Johnny. criticize them to the point of having a couple of dealers. I think I've seen him once, once, tears. and it was like, at once I've seen him be angry at a dealer, and I thought he was just trolling, man, because it was like way out of his character from what I, I know. I can understand where he's coming from. He's playing the biggest cash game no, I understand. Yeah. in a casino in the world. And he expects them to know how to do their... This is the top tier. This is as, as big as it can possibly get in a casino setting. And they're putting in dealers who don't know how to deal the games, who make big mistakes that end up costing people more money than they make in a year. You know, so I can understand why he would expect perfection. Um, whereas... You know, maybe the players who are playing smaller shouldn't expect perfection. But it, it, there's just there's really no excuse for making somebody feel like trash. You know, feel worthless. And when when that happens, they banned it. They banned it. So now he can't play this game that he's just extracted so much money from. You know. So, the dealer, uh, the, the de a few dealers got their feelings hurt, and he lost potentially a career. You know, now what is he going to do? Play the big game at the Orleans? You know, no, he's going to have to drive to the Commerce every time he wants to play big, or beg everybody to go play over at you know some other casino. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure he can still play Bellagio. No, he can't. Oh, it's not the Bellagio. Oh, <laughs> Bellagio <laughs> and Aria. Sorry, off limits to him now. For some reason, I thought. Hopefully, it was some he'll be able to get it, you know, worked out. Poor, yeah, he'll, he'll probably get it. You know, they'll probably let him back. <sighs> probably, I think. you know, I, it would have been a lot easier for him to be let back in if he wasn't such an extractor. Yeah, he you does know, if he really was a big well. Donator in that game. If he lost a lot of money in the game, they, then they would put up with the abuse. Yeah, probably. they would have let him pee on the dealers. Pee? No, that was the old. Remember that the story? Dealers. It was you, the, you pee uh, on dealers. That was the Stu Walker story. He, he peed on a dealer. On a dealer. Oh, I didn't know that. Pissed on a dealer. They did an 86 on him. And uh, Joe Bartholdi, uh, his, his dad used to deal at Binion's Horseshoe back in the 70s when um, one of Tony Spilatro's guys was in playing. Tony Spilatro, the ant, is who, uh, you know, he was the, the character that Joe Pesci's character in Casino was based on. Real guy, real scary dude. And uh, one of his guys was in there playing at the uh, you know Binion's Horseshoe, and looked at uh, looked at at Joe Bartholdi Sr. and told him that if he gave him another bad beat like that, he was gonna shoot him. And he did give him another bad beat, and the guy did pull out a gun and started taking shots at Joe, and he was super drunk, so he missed. And they kicked him out of the casino, and the very next night he was back in. So they will put up with a lot if you are a big loser, a big name in poker, or a, a big mobster. But if you're a, a big winner in a professional poker game, they're not going to put up with a lot. And they're going to look for every excuse to get you out of there. <sighs> These nuts poker. Thank you very much for uh, for submitting the stream. I think Michelle's going to uh, send you the ebook here pretty soon. I just did. Yeah. Probably going to be stopping to uh, stopping that uh, free ebook promotion here in the next few months. I think a few weeks, a few months. Okay, B Water. Time to go ahead and start fighting back.
range is wide open. We know that. He knows that we know. Luckily for us, um, we actually have a pretty strong hand here. And we flopped pretty much, uh, pretty much the ideal flop. Anything else going on in the poker world? Um, let me think. Our buddy Jordan Christos won a uh, big event over did. at the Congress right he before did. Christmas. Our best friend, Jordan Christos. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. He was like, I won a tournament at Commerce. And I was like, oh, that's, or the bike. I won, a, I won the bike tournament. I was like, oh, that's good. Probably good for like you know seven or eight grand. Nope, it was a hundred fifty thousand dollars score, and uh, he had fifty two percent of the chips. Fifty two percent of the chips in play, and they gave him almost first place money. He was showing us the deal that he got and the ICM chart that that was were, were spitting out, you know the equities. And his tournament stack was worth about 111,000. They gave him 142,000. Well, I, I, I want to take a, a, a quick, quick break here because I need to ask Michelle some oh, gosh. advice. Oh, are you live? Okay, we're back. Oh, I was gonna. I was trying to. I was trying to pretend there. What were you gonna pretend? I was gonna say I'm so disappointed in you. Into the camera. Okay, about what it. you asked me. Say it. it was so inappropriate. I will not mention it again. You can tell no. me what I asked <laughs> if no, you want. No. You, no, I forget. It, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. That's awkward silence. Well, said so I wasn't going to talk about what Happy I was going to talk about. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's go ahead and let's play it again. This is for the new people that are, just play it once, though. This is for the, all you guys joining us now. I just want to. Happy New Year to all, including to my many enemies and those who have fought me and lost. <laughs> So badly, <laughs> they just don't know what to do. <laughs> I want that to be my ringtone. Love. <laughs> just gonna eat sticks with him. <laughs> great, great. Story. Thank you, Mark Hamill, and thank you, Trump. Thanks, Trump. Thanks, Donald J. Aw, D's Nut Poker says they, he loves us, and we've got the prime sub till he collapses, or till I collapse. Cool. <laughs> thanks, D's Nuts. Appreciate Please don't that. collapse. Don't collapse. And thanks for the sub, guys. It, may, it means all the difference. I definitely mean it. We would, not be, we would not still be here if it weren't for the subscribers. So everybody who has the, uh, the badge next to their name, big shout out to you guys. Cheers. Everybody without one, you should thank them. Because without them, Twitch would probably not be here. Which is a good thing, the Twitch Prime. But so what? Okay. But speaking of the new Twitch things that you were telling, you were talking to me about. Mm -hmm. Do you say there was a way for uh, moderators like myself to now check comments and let the com? Because you said there's a way for to sort out the trolls now, weren't you telling me? Because I, I get sometimes I get comments with little red marks on them. 
Is that what that is? Yeah. And so basically now uh, Twitch is a little bit better at detecting uh, potential griefers and, and trollish remarks. Um, and so they'll, they'll kind of hold it before they publish it and only mods can see it for a little bit. Uh, you'll see you, you, you'll see that like someone will post something and then it's yeah i saw and it's it kind of like a different it, it's like highlighted, highlighted. almost kind of like a like a uh a sub and if you don't do anything it will it will it will eventually just you know put oh. it out to everybody oh okay but it gives you so like it, so it kind of like, times it out know, five or six seconds to actually mute somebody who might have said something really uh, abusive oh i didn't know that so just another thing that, that Twitch is doing right. I feel like they've done so many things wrong. You know, I, I hate to uh, criticize Twitch because they, they, they get a lot right, but man, there were some, you know, the, the lack of control that you have over uh, your, your own chat as a streamer is surprisingly bad. Um, and this was a development decision. You know, their engineering team basically built the Twitch chat on IRC. And so uh, they, they, it's just a nightmare because they, they, they just don't keep people from coming in, you know, abusing a streamer or abusing, you know, other people in a certain person's stream. As soon as they get banned, they just, you know, sign up with another throwaway account and continue the same thing. Um, you know, sure, there's, there's you know, IP tracking, but they don't really... But good news, good news, good news, Dutch. What's the good news? Melania Trump is going to battle cyberbullying. So that's, we don't have to worry about it anymore. That's probably why Twitch is implementing these changes. That's right. It's because of millen is millennia, millennia, Trump. Mel Melania? Melania, Melania. Is it Melania? Yeah. Melania? Mel. Because Mel. of Mel Trump. Mel Trump. Mel I think it's Melania. Mel Melania. 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 Melania Trump. So, Animal Mother making the three bet here. Eh. Well, we're not folding. And the question is, can we raise? I. Or do we just make a call and peel a flop and put Animal Mother on queens? Just auto queens. It's never a big mistake to just raise with ace king. It just can't be that big of a mistake. So let's just go ahead and make the shove. Sometimes maybe we get animal mother off of a better hand. A lot of times we get animal mother off of the same hand. And if animal mother calls, she's calling probably with like a kings, queens, jacks type hand. And we're flipping. Wow. So she folded. We ended up uh, getting the 5,000, which is about a third of our stack. And probably pushing Animal Mother off of, uh, hell, we might have pushed Animal Mother off the same hand. Um, maybe we pushed Animal Mother off of Ace Queen, but I'm actually okay with that because between just calling there with Ace King versus Ace Queen and then being forced to basically just check fold if we miss, um, it, even though Ace Queen is very far behind Ace King, I actually would rather have her spot as the three better than my spot as the uh, initial opener and caller, um, given that we're both probably going to miss our hands and the action is probably just going to go check bet fold. So if we if we pushed Animal Mother off of worse, I'm okay with it because it was you know even though she had worse, we were in the worst you know we were actually in the in the bad you know in the bad spot there. And uh, if, if, if we happen to push Animal Mother off of the same hand, it's a huge win. If we happen to push Animal Mother off of uh, you know, a, a, a favorite like Pocket Tens or Pocket Jacks, it's a, it's a pretty good win. A big part of the power of Ace King comes in, uh, in the fact that you have these blocker cards and it makes it just so much harder for Animal Mother to have Aces or Kings. So for you to actually be dominated there is uh, is pretty rare. It just never happens. I've never seen it happen. 
Mikey Mounts, how you doing, man? I remember. It's great to see you. Mikey Mounts says, I we met a five like, Do you the remember? Road. Right during that, uh, that Did I meet too? awesome event. Bony Fish, good to see you. He says, hope to see some more streams. And maybe a DB Twitch Poker League. Exactly. I was maybe talking to Dutch seminars. about that. About a Poker League and re redoing that again. I think maybe it would be Maybe revisiting great. Poker Zero. Maybe. Where we just do it. We, there's no prizes, though. We're just going to do a leaderboard. And you get accolades, I guess. Congratulations. If, if we do it, there's going to be prizes. I can't hear you. What did you just say about me? I was just whispering. Whispering to my buddy. All right, a little King Jack offsuit against Butters and Animal Mother. Let's go ahead and see a flop here. Seven, deuce, three. I think we're just giving up. Okay, so 21 out of 50. 50 players left. We have... It's not so bad. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's pretty all right. It is a tournament with a double add-on, and we had 15 players not take that double add-on. Did you? Uh, 2,500 for first, and starts paying at 10. I should probably jump into this uh, this $30 rebuying add-on just in case. Uh, just in case some. A horrible, sick, bad beat happens and we get knocked out. We're going to be going with uh, 2.5x. A little bit higher, especially against Butters. Shit. Oh, well. What do you have? Oh. oh That's God. about as bad as it could get for us. Seven. And we give him oh, wow. a pretty bad beat. Jeez. So we're making the call there, expecting nice. to see a hand like ace, queen, ace, jack, maybe smaller pocket pairs. Yeah, I mean, nines was smaller. Like, if there's bad. one hand we don't want to see, that's the hand. That's like the worst possible matchup for eight, nine suited. We're getting. You know, somewhere around uh, 1.75 to 1 on the call. So if we're like, you know, anywhere around 40 percent, uh, we're in pretty good shape. And I think, uh, you know, if we if we put in a range of every pocket pair, uh, king queen uh, and ace 10 plus, we're going to be in pretty good shape against that range with eight nine suited. Um, but pocket nines. That's the worst, worst case I'm scenario. surprised that you actually won that hand. I'm not supposed to win. Yeah, I was that's really like surprised as as when I heard you. That's as bad a beat as it can It get. took me a second because I was like, that's not a... Sh oh, okay. Yeah, I have all my colors changed, so I, I could see the green space. Let's run the numbers, okay? First off, just to show you guys that it's not that bad of a call if you had something like an ace-queen versus 8-9 suited. We're looking at 41.2 to 58.4 if we're up against the overcards. If you had something like pocket sixes, then we you know, are actually a small favorite at 49.7 versus 49.49. So a very big chunk of the time, 8-9 suited is a, you know, it is a standard call there. Uh, the other thing I like about 8-9 suited is it's just so rarely dominated. I'd rather have 8-9 suited than ace-8 suited because there's not a lot of hands where he's shoving there that 8-9 suited is actually dominated by. You're only looking at aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, and nines. Um, eights we're not even going to really call dominated. 
because he probably doesn't have hands like king eight or queen nine. You know, jack nine is probably not something that he's looking at shoving with. Um, ace nine and ace eight are, are really, you know, and the bigger pocket pairs are really the only hands in his range that were completely just waxed. But man, pocket nines, that's as bad as it gets for us. What were we looking at? 16.34%. So uh, about, as, about as bad as it could get. It's basically like um, cracking his aces. Yeah, even like if he had pocket eights, that kind of surprises me. Even with pocket eights, we're at 38% to win. 38% to his 60%. Wow. So, you know, the only hand that we're really worried about he had pocket tens were, you know, pocket tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces all have is pretty bad. Everything else were in good shape, and some hands were even ahead. Anyway, I feel fine for the, uh, I feel fine about the call, but wow, what a, what a pleasant surprise, man. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Vice chick, yes, we are. We just started wearing our Fitbits. I, I lost my Fitbit <laughs> for a while there, but I did find it again. So I gotta, I gotta put it back on. I think Dutch Hill has his. Yeah, we've been making good use. You of know, it. we 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 just got a membership at a gym, so we we it's one of those uh, pizza day and bagel day gyms. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been going a lot. Yeah. So actually, saw some crew uh, over there. One day, it's like Dutch, Willie, how you doing? Uh, no, we haven't relocated. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I haven't really seen what the stream looks like right now. I'm sure the black background's not the best because I feel like it takes away from my hair and Dutch's head. But I don't really know what it looks like right now. We'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work on it. I like this hand. We're going to be able to see a flop. Put a thousand in. Maybe hit a four. Try to... Uh, try to stack Animal Mother. Welcome to the stream, one mark marker. And what is uh, and Twinkie for me wants to know what your thought is on Jason Mercier. Is there some news that I missed? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. He's a great dog. What are your thoughts on Jason Mercier? What's to say? Nice guy. He has a lucky dog too, right? Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Yeah. Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Yeah, maybe. And when's the, how long do we have till break? Six minutes? At the uh, Bellagio. Uh, yeah. Maybe we no, should. No, we have a. Uh, oh, an hour? 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes? Okay, because maybe we should fix the stream. What do you mean? Because I think that your the car colors are probably off, and you can pick a different. Why don't you pick blue? Blue background's good, dude. Like a blue? Like the blue and the. Because black is too black. Too dark. All right. What do you have here? Ace nine offsuit. Look who we have in Texas to Nevada on this stream as well, or on the on your table. I just noticed. I wonder if he's watching. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, he's right Texas there. Texas to Nevada. Good to see you, man. I, know I already gave you the shout out earlier in the stream. I don't but, know if he's in. Uh, the, I don't know if he's in chat. Here we are, actually playing he side probably... by side. <laughs> Good luck to you, sir. You want a different background color? Yeah, I want the blue, like the the pretty blue that you have. Can you get that, or is that something that you have to create? 
Um, let me see if I can do something. Wait, you have a hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, do you like maybe, yeah, like a blue, a nice dark blue, a jean blue, a Michelle jean blue. Put something like that. Looks all right. Looks a little better for you. Does the blue make my eyes look better? Yes. Nice. What about um and, some, and your some colors? Shadows. I, I, I the shadows are much better than black. I, I promise. I don't know. There's Take like, it from me, weird Dutch. big shadow right on your nose. Take it from me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Let me see if I can't uh, adjust it a little bit. Is it right here? Let's make the call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just let's stream here. like this, Come and then for you, you should donkey. make your um, colors different because you look way pale, dude. Do I? Yeah, I don't I know like why. The way I, look. I don't know why. Men's warehouse. And the black makes you even look more paler. It's like you're a vampire. You're not that. You're not that pale, dude. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Let's fire out the half pot and see if uh, we can take this with Jack High. One down, Goss Core. Two down. Three cheers for position. Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Musket Collins <laughs> has a gym gym membership outdoors and it's free. That's awesome. But it doesn't have pizza, and it doesn't have bagels, dude. <laughs> yeah, and is it open 24 hours? Yeah, we're going to go to our gym after the stream, and we're going to get our bagels in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah. I think the background, I mean, we'll fix it. I mean, it's, uh, it's I, I, I fixed it a little bit. Did you? Good. Yeah. You'll yeah, because I, I, you know, I, I went into a different screen on my computer, and I saw what... what what you know what I'm going to do? There Hold on for a second. Like a really crazy nightmare. One, you know what? I'm actually going to show you guys what's behind the curtain. That's what it, that's what the green screen looks like, boys. And we Don't show to... mine. I feel naked. No, 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 no. Oh, there you go. Why don't you... You going to do it without a screen? But th is there a yeah. glare? There's a little bit of light, but it's not so bad. What about me? Do I get a background too? Nope. But I have my background. Does that look better? Is it better? Yeah. That's cool. Let's see. Got the little Hearthstone going on. Hearthstone action. Tuba Grande has, it, has an idea. Okay. It says Let's that it. one of the prizes could be one of the sweet drawings that I did, like the one on your profile. Did you guys see this one? It's on. Yes. Well, you can show it. I didn't I give you a copy of it on digital. Okay. It's awesome. You should just use that as your background, Dutch. I don't know why. That I is have a that. Uh, Michelle J. Cosper <laughs> original. <laughs> Happy New Year, says Bogalicious. Hey, by the way, big shout out to Scorpio and Bogalicious. Thank you. Bracelet number four in a few months. I hope so, man. I hope so. So do I get a do, do I have a background too or no? Your background is just like the uh, the blue of the stream. You don't want to put mine up. I have a cool one too, guys. I have a cool poster too behind <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> guys, look at my poster. <laughs> guys, okay. No, 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 no. Is it? I have to. I have to move my screen. Okay, we'll, we'll be right back, guys. Oh. There's your background. Yes. Oh, wait. I didn't change it. We didn't change it. Because it's too high. I have a Warcraft poster behind me. 
It's an amazing Warcraft poster that I got at BlizzCon. We went to BlizzCon. Yeah, that's right. In October. See, look. But I can show it to them, right? Look how high it is. It's so too high. Yeah, it's too high. That's pretty crazy because it looks like you actually just peeled away part of the overlay. Now I'm putting the overlay back. <laughs> All right, so you don't have a background. Is there a reflection? But you can see me though now. And the re is there a reflection? Can you see my hand? No. You can't. Nope. Oh, but they can see it through here. Okay. See? Ah, uh, maybe we'll move the shelf back. Maybe. I really miss... We have a really cool shelf now that we have some new games. We have um, have to the hear Western from JD Trail. Cole. It's the only problem. J.D. Cole's always let me know how it's like, oh, it looks so messy. It doesn't, doesn't look, look messy, messy. It looks awesome. You wish you had this bookshelf. And um, we have <laughs> uh, we have Istanbul we have to play. Well, be water. Ooh. That's probably the right move. Honestly, Goodbye. because if uh, if you had made just a normal raise, I'm probably making a re-raise. Mm. With Tony Sand calling with A7, I'm not sure if I really like it. What did you have here? I had 8-9 suited. 8-7 mm. suited. I'm not really sure if I like the call there from Tony Sand, just because I think A7 is uh, quite often dominated there. Turns out that he was on the uh, you know wrong side of a flip, but... I just don't, I don't really love it. I feel like B-Water probably should have gotten through there. Do you have any laser, do you have any laser school pictures in the background? I can make you a laser background, Dutch. <sighs> okay. That'd I can cool. make you one. Would you like me to make you one? I would like that very much. John Blaze says, speaking of Hearthstone, your Twitter picture is amazing. That's on the show. I did Michelle that freehand. Did that. I freehanded that shit. She freehanded it. it was <laughs> <laughs> well, for last year's uh, Christmas, Dutch got me a really awesome tablet that I never use. Well, I use it not as much as I should use it, and I decided to make him a little drawing. He had a pose for it, though. Yeah. So she took a she took a photo of it. Of uh, of, of she had me. I had him hold dress cards. up in the little Hearthstone. No, I had him hold cards. <laughs> <laughs> she had me hold June and cards. Yeah, I had her him hold the dog too. Oh man, it is really cute. Yeah, I guess I could do that for a prize. That'd be fun. It'd take me a few days though. So, animal mother making that open lamp. It's so tempting. So tempting. Oh no, I forgot what I was gonna do. Oh, laser picture. I do have a laser picture of my of myself. Have you? I don't know if you've seen it. Do you have any school pictures of you, Dutch? I don't think I've ever seen any school pictures of you. Yeah, I have some school pictures. So, make you a laser there is background. some. Here's some more news. Okay. Uh, Mike McDonald. Do you know who that is? Timex. You ever heard of him? No, I heard of Timex. So, yes, the the watch brand, Timex. There's a watch brand, and yeah. then there's a poker player. Oh, is that his nickname, Timex? And honestly, I'm not sure which one is worth more <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Mike McDonald is one of the guys that somehow took all the money out of poker um, between you know his own fabulous play and his staking decisions and his, you know his swapping decisions. It's 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 pretty incredible. He for like I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he had a, a pretty big chunk of. Uh, well, who knows? Who knows what his business is? But um, he drives around in a Lamborghini. Is it green or is it orange? It's one or the other, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's always one or the other. And he had a uh, he had a little thing called the Bank of Timex. 
where he would cross book poker players. So cross booking works like this, okay? Uh, let's say that I'm playing a five dollar tournament, but I'm used to playing bigger. I want to play a tournament like uh, a five million dollar tournament. Okay, let's be realistic. Okay, five dollar tournament we're playing on on Twitch, and we want to cross book it and make it as if it was a five hundred dollar tournament for us. So we're, we buy in for five bucks, and then we go to Mike McDonald, Timex, the bank of Timex, and we give him five thousand dollars, and he matches whatever we win, but he charges like a big. So it's basically he's betting against you. <laughs> you know, it's basically how it's basically how it works. So uh, he made a lot of money doing this because poker players always love to to think you know that they have such a you know just a much higher ROI than they actually have. The reality is most poker players are going you know professional poker players are going to be somewhere in you know with you know the, the bigger the buy-in, the smaller the ROI percentage is going to be, and that ROI percentage is usually going to be double digits. Some series is going to be triple digits for some some players. You know, I've got a triple digit ROI in the WSOP, but let's get real. Maybe that's just because I got lucky in a few events. You know, if you take away my two biggest scores in the WSOP, I still actually have a positive ROI. But it's nowhere near the uh, the, the triple digits where it is right now. And um, you know, poker's gotten harder. I, I feel like maybe you know a, a 30 to 40 percent ROI is is a, about realistically what what anybody should be able to expect. And although there are going to be some times when certain players are playing just so so pure and perfect that their ROI is well above that. For example, you know, Fedor Holtz in you know in his incredible run last year, Jason Mercier in his WSOP run. The fact is that you can't recognize when you're going to be playing that way. You you just do or you don't. And poker players are almost universally going to be overestimating their chances in any given situation. So Mike McDonald has capitalized on this in the form of something called the Bank of Timex, and he is you know that that kind of went the you know went away, but I think that he made some pretty good money off of it. Well, now he's back with something called PokerShares.com. PokerShares.com takes this Bank of Timex idea and actually makes it uh, a little bit, a little bit bigger and a little bit more legitimate. He actually has uh, some sort of uh, gaming license, and it's basically set out like a, like a sports book, like a sports book on poker players. And I think that his, you know, his assumption is that most poker players will go there to bet on themselves in events, but you can also bet on other players in events too in the same kind of way. He takes a VIG, you know, comes up with a kind of a, an ROI. Any player, any event, now you can have a piece of that player. It's not a direct piece. You're not sharing their, you know, it's not like a staking situation, but it, um, yeah, you know what? I think I do want to go ahead and make a little three bet here. It's not a staking situation, so you're not going to be sharing the win with somebody. But uh, then they don't even know about it. You know, you're, you're basically making bets with uh, Mike McDonald um, on how certain players are going to perform. Is it going to really do anything to change poker? No, I don't think so. But it is kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Uh, they have uh, some some interesting prop bets on there too. Like one of the things that you can uh, make a bet on is whether Joe Ingram is going to be able to make forty thousand words this month. He's writing a book, Joey, Chicago Joey. Poppy, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Not an easy thing writing a book. It's not an easy thing getting forty thousand words on on print. Uh, you know, I, they say everybody has a book in them, but not everybody can get it out. I think those are pretty true words. And I think that uh, I think Joe Ingram will have some interesting things to say. So I look forward to reading his book, and I'm. Rooting for him, but man, forty thousand words. Forty thousand words in a month is pretty. Is that a lot? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty tough. I'm making you a cool background here. I'm that's trying to. That's tough. why I'm distracted. Oh shoot, I messed up. 
I guess it's not so uh, tough if your book is like a stream of consciousness book, but if it's... What are these writing about? What is he writing about, poker? Um, I, I don't really know. Another interesting prop is the uh, Kate Hall, Mike Dintail heads up match. Did you hear about this, Michelle? This kind of made some poker headlines for a second. You know who Kate Hall is. Sure. She's the, uh, the Florida poker pro, uh, ex-lawyer, who you know kind of broke on the scene in the last couple of years, made some final tables, did, the, uh, mm-hmm. did that podcast with... Uh, I just had a complete mind melt. Uh, Brian. Dan O'Brien. Yeah. I had a complete mind melt. I got a good background for you. I'm making. I'm, oh, I think I'm overdoing the lasers, though. Got to gotta get the lasers in here. What are, you, what are you mind melting about? Oof, too many lasers, I think, but. Fade the six adder. So Kate Hall, I guess, uh, made some sort of move that Mike Dentail didn't approve of. Mike Dentail is an uh, East Coast and Florida professional poker player who, uh, he's got a big mouth on him, but he's also a pretty decent player. He was the one who was wrapped up in that Lily, uh, uh, Lily Coletto drama where he made the fold to Lily where it was like less than, less than half a blind to call when they were in the satellite. So he, he's done some kind of shady things in the past. Anyway, um, and he definitely has a reputation for, for being a loud mouth and a bit of a chauvinist. But uh, he's also a pretty decent player. So anyway, he, he criticized her and called her out. And the Twitter, the Twitter back and forth kind of happened until it eventually went to what usually happens, where one of them challenges the other to a heads-up match. And the other one either accepts or rejects, and it basically fizzles away. But this time, this time they're making like a big event out of it. The grudge match uh, between Kate Hall and Mike Dintail. And then Mike uh, sent out like a, a big tweet about how he would really appreciate any heads up coaching from anybody out there. So if any of you are looking for a gig, I would recommend getting in touch with Mike Dintail. Because I hear he's hiring a poker coach. <laughs> Who's the smart money on? Who's the smart money on there? Well, I guess Timex booked it. And it's a pretty... I'm not very good at, at, at reading European sports book odds. So I'm not sure who he has as the favorite. Not sure. All right, let's do a 2,000. We're sticking with the 2.5x here. Big Boy Doe says, what's that website called again? The Bank of Time X? PokerShares, PokerShares.com. PokerShares.com. That's a pretty good domain name. Got to hand it to him. That's a, that's a good brand. When I was looking at the domain name, it, it looked kind of eh. When I was looking at the website, it, it didn't... There wasn't a lot of flash to it, um, but there is a name attached to it, so I would feel pretty comfortable betting on it. I think, uh, will it do anything with poker? Probably not. Not really. Just a way for uh, for Mike McDonald to take even more money from <laughs> poker. I guess. Lucky Chewy can't, has officially launched his site. Lucky Chewy Poker. You guys might have heard about this uh, a few months ago. Let's take a look at Lucky Chewy Poker. 
I got uh... a. <laughs> kind of hard to make lasers. <laughs> I'm I'm rooting for Lucky Chewy. So is it a free poker. side or is it a what kind no, of side is gonna, it? It's gonna be a it's it, it's gonna be a Lucky Chewy poker. It's gonna be a real money site. Oh wow! And they just launched it. Let me where you can actually go and where is it? <laughs> At Lucky Chewy, LuckyChewy.com. Where's his? Uh... Is it in America? I don't understand. I, like I, I was just there, and I thought it was just LuckyChewyPoker.com. Did you mean Lucky Chewy Poker? Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's what I mean. Lucky Chewy Poker. I was just there today. I was looking at it and I was like, "Oh, look at that!" It's got a he's got a picture of himself on the, <laughs> you know, it's the front of it. And I'm just not so sure that that Lucky Chewy is uh, is a big enough name in poker to be able to um, be able to drive drive new players to that site. I think it's a horrible brand name. Horrible brand name. It's like if I was like. Maybe like, you know, Lucky Poker or, you know, but like, it just doesn't, it just doesn't expand well. And looking at the, at the site itself, I looked under the hood, you know, it doesn't have his little Google Analytics code in there. It looks like it was a, um, it, I'm not really that impressed with it yet, but what I what I will say is that more competition is good. No one likes the position that PokerStars is in right now in the market. Everybody hates PokerStars. PokerStars sucks right now. You know, they're taking all the rakes. They've really been hurting the, the professional players, and now we have Lucky Chewy. We also have uh, uh, Phil Galfond, I think, or maybe it was Isaac Haxton. One of the guys was talking about doing something with, uh, you know, turning you know, Run It Once into a, a real money site. The whole idea of buy players for players, low rake and uh, big promotions, and, and re, you know giving back to the community and treating poker pros as like valuable assets rather than um, you know just a you know a, a cost of doing business. Basically, that's what PokerStars kind of sees winning players as. Um, I think I'm all for it. I, I hope that it succeeds, and I also think that as you know, de developing from a player's perspective is helpful, but th the truth is, though, pretty much every poker player I know doesn't know the first damn thing about technology. Very few exceptions. Very few. And uh, I don't think that, I don't think Lucky Chewy really understands what he's getting into. And I don't think that, you know, I, I don't think that he's going to have really any involvement when it comes to the actual technical heavy lifting of, uh, of of creating a site or even the business day-to-day -day stuff you know I, poker players the top poker players are good at, at you know at playing poker not necessarily running a poker business or running a technical you know technology business I hope that it works out for him because I think it'd be, it'd be good for for uh, for the poker community and I think it'd be good for him too because he's actually a pretty pleasant guy even though he you know has some some weird spiritualist views. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's pretty sure that like got, like dogs can see auras. We never it, we like never that. answered that question though, right? And it's answered, I think. It was also pretty funny too. I remember seeing him trying to pick up on a uh, on uh, one of the masseuse girls there, and he looks like he's homeless. She was really feeling uncomfortable, and then then she looked confused because all these really big name pros would come up, and you know give him a little fist bump and congratulate him on his two million dollar score from the week before and <laughs> it was congratulations it's pretty, it pretty fun to watch guys well i'm gonna be right back here i made you a, a background
Okay, guys, we're back. I'm, uh, I was right in the middle of changing <laughs> the background and almost missed this awesome hand, Pocket Kings. Now it's shit, but it was really good about five seconds ago. It was like I was, I was excited enough to go ahead and come back with a green screen up. <sighs> now it's crap. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that scene in Baby Boom. Where Diane Keaton is changing the diaper on her boss's desk. Why does that? Why does it remind me? Because it's shit. Because now it's shit. That's why. That's why it reminds me of that scene. Sorry, dude. There's probably about five of you will know what I'm talking about. The other five of you, you know, the other, uh, the other yeah. 160 of you guys, go out and rent Baby Boom at your local Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get this background up. This is what we got to do. Oh, nuts. Oh, are you out of this hand? Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm so done with this hand. Really? Oh. One of them probably has an ace, right? Goscourt probably Shit. has an ace. Yeah, one of them has an ace, but I guess we'll never know. Thank God. I guess we'll never know. I had a feeling that King was going to come. Really? I did. I thought you were still in the hand, dude. No. No. I know. You can't just stick around. Can't be results oriented. Did you get the background up? I'm trying. Is it too big? I made it's it gonna, pretty big. Get, well, give me one more second, guys. Good, good, good. Laser power! Look at this. These are good luck lasers. These yeah, are ace that. lasers. We've got the pocket aces I'm not first very, time. I'm not very good at doing lasers. So. I think that it looks pretty fly. I, just, I think that it looks it? pretty good. Let's see. Pretty pro. Um, can I show them what it was inspired by? Yeah. Okay. It was inspired by... I have to redo that picture. I have to fix it. It's kind of old. It was scanned in. Who's that girl? Is that Michelle J? <laughs> oh my gosh, do it again, do it again. Side by side. Look at that. That's really cute. I guess. 12 years old me. 12 year old Michelle. <laughs> Good luck Okay, here. so we got Goscorp making the raise. And uh, you know what guys, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. If he's got King Jack or Pocket Jacks or Pocket Twos or Pocket Kings, then we're going to say goodbye to this stream. But if he's got King Queen or if he's got like a, an Ace Jack, we're going to be in great shape. Making the shove. What do you think, Goscorp? King Jack. Not good. We need a three uh, or a two. Ah, uh, uh, it sucks. We still had some outs. Okay, guys, so our pocket aces cracked a meter. It's one, I guess. Are we starting it over? I guess we started it over. It's a minus one. GG. We're out of the Lasers Poker weren't Classic so lucky. with the pocket aces. Goscorp played it amazing. Made, you know, he, he, he flopped top two like a champ. And uh, are we ever getting away from it? No. Never. Never. Yeah, I mean, so, you can't really get away from that. I Yeah. I mean, his bet sizing was actually really small. He made pretty much a min raise. So, sirens were kind of going off. I guess he could I, call, but what are you hoping to catch up with? Then, Just check, check, check. You know, the, the problem with calling is a lot of times he's making those moves with hands like a queen 10. Um Wait. Well, you know, you're, gonna, you're hoping 10, that he doesn't catch up, nine. right? You're hoping well, that... Well, you, you want to charge him for it. 
Um, but you're also thinking that he's, he's just going to call so often with hands that you have completely crushed. And worst case scenario is he has a stupid hand like that. And you still have outs, you know, any two, any running pair, any ace. So um, did you start at the 30? Nope. That's it for us. Okay. That's our stream tonight. We're going to end on a, uh, on a high note. With lasers. <laughs> with, with lasers, With guys. lasers. Lasers. Are we going to keep the lasers up forever? They're lucky. I, say, I tell you, they're lucky. I mean, I did get aces. <laughs> and you did get kings. Gosh, that was kings a, that and lucky. aces back to back. Both of them cracked. Well, yeah, I suppose. Kind of blue. So, um, yeah, it's all right. You know what? Tomorrow we'll be back. We should go to the gym. Same time, out. right? Seven o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock tomorrow. You guys are and awesome. We don't want to wear we don't want to wear out our, our Twitch our, welcome our here. Twitch our welcome, our, twi our right. Twitch back come back. So, good luck to all those who are still in the tournament. Yep, and big big shout out to all the uh, the the resubs. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much. And for the ones that the are, are that are still with us as well. Oh yeah, the resubs. So. And the new subs and all the subs. Are there were there some new subs tonight? Uh, I think we mainly maybe. had the re uh, the returns. Oh, really? And really appreciate all of you guys being here because I'll tell you what without without the sub um, without the subs coming in, we wouldn't be streaming. We wouldn't be streaming. So thanks for keeping it going. Catch you later. Well, I was trying to I was trying to fool them, Dutch.